everyone welcome to little things today we're going to be making this really cute mini moon and star accessory it's completely customizable you can make it different colors or you can make it different pairs for example star with a star or moon with a moon and the coolest thing about this is that it can become a bookmark a back charm or even a headphone accessory if you're an absolute beginner or have just started crocheting this tutorial is definitely for you because i'll be teaching you step by step on how to crochet from start to finish also i have a free written pattern on my instagram page at littlethings.crochet over here and also i post all the behind the scenes of my crochet stuff so yeah feel free to give it a follow if you're interested So for the materials, I'll be using this crochet kit that I got from Amazon and you guys have to get this because it literally has everything you need for crocheting. It has all sizes hooks from 2mm up to 8mm so you could work with all kinds of yarns from 3 ply yarn all the way up to bulky yarn. It also comes with row counter, measuring tape for gouache, different sizes metal darning needles so it doesn't break like the plastic ones, scissors for cutting the yarns, and oh my gosh, a stitch marker. I've always used bobby pins instead of a stitch marker, but bobby pins always stain my yarn. And having a stitch marker is such a game changer and it also helps to keep track of your work. There's this really cool yarn cutting ring which is designed for you to cut the yarns on the go so you don't have to break scissors outside. And not gonna lie, I really wish I got this sooner because when I first started, I didn't know what supplies to get and I ended up getting them individually, which was so all over the place and I ended up not getting all the supplies right. So if you're a beginner crocheter, I highly suggest you getting this crochet kit. I've linked this crochet kit down in the description below and you guys can purchase it through my Amazon link. In this tutorial, I'll be using this 3mm hook, stitch marker, darning needle, and scissors from this kit. For the yarns, I'm using 5-ply milk cotton yarn with the color yellow and pink. I got these from a random store in Hong Kong and surprisingly, I actually found the exact same brand on Amazon and I've also linked it in the description down below. So without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. First, we're going to start with the moon and I'll be using this yellow color yarn. So to start the project, we're going to be making a slip knot first. So to make a slip knot, we're going to be holding the end of the yarn with our right hand. With our left hand, we're going to wrap two fingers. So I call this side the inside of the finger. Grab the yarn using our inside of our finger like this. And then we're going to twist it clockwise like this. And then that would create a loop on our left hand. We're gonna pull this tail from our right hand through the loop on our left hand. So we're gonna grab this. And then with our right hand, we're gonna also pull the working yarn. And then we just gotta pull it both sides and then pull it really tight. And then that's our slip knot. So as you can see, there's a loop and then there's a knot and there's this tail. To make the slip knot tighter, we gotta hold the knot on our left hand and then pull the tail on our right hand. So we gotta grab our hook and then stick our hook into the loop and then we gotta see if it's too loose. If there's so much gap in the loop, then we just gotta pull the tail. And you just want the hook to move freely but not too loose. So just adjust the loop accordingly. So the way I'm holding the yarn, first I like to wrap my yarn using my three fingers on my left hand. So first we're gonna place our working yarn on top of our three fingers and then we're gonna bring it back and then pull it up like this, so basically creating a loop on our three fingers. After wrapping the yarn on our three fingers, then we're going to place the yarn behind our index finger like this. And then we're going to hold the yarn using our middle finger and thumb, so like this. With my ring finger and pinky, I just like to hold it like this. Be sure when you're crocheting, my left index finger is always pointed up. So the working yarn can slip smoothly like this. So yeah, that's basically how I grab my yarn. And to hold the hook, I'm a pencil gripper. Basically, I hold it like I'm writing. So basically like that. And nothing really special about this. But you can also hold it like, like you're holding a knife like that and then crochet like this. But I personally prefer this holding method. So after making a slip knot, we're gonna be chaining. We just got to insert our hook into the slip knot first. So to chain, it's basically just yarn over and pull through. And to yarn over, we basically bring our hook to the bottom of the yarn like this. And then we're gonna bring it to behind and 
over the yarn like this and this action is called yarn over as you can see we've already grabbed the working yarn with our hook and then we're gonna pull it through the loop on our hook which is this loop right here and then we're just gonna pull it through like this and then now we have a V here and that V right here is called one chain so chaining is actually very easy it's basically just yarn over and pull through and then after that we're gonna hold the chain and then move on to the next chain to chain again we yarn over basically like this and then now we've already grabbed the working yarn with our hook and then we're gonna pull it through this loop on our hook as you can see this creates a second V and we're just going to repeat this step for eight times in total. So again, we yarn over, basically bring the yarn to the back of the working yarn and on top. So you kind of go over the working yarn and then you just pull it through the loop on our hook like this. And now we have a third chain and then we yarn over like this. And then we're going to pull it through. yarn over and then pull it through and now we have one two three four five chains so we just got to repeat this three more times to have a total of eight chains so ta-da that's our eight chains so you should have something that looks like this it's basically just a whole roll of v so as you can see here the v that i'm pointing at with my left hand is the first v that's closest to the hook this one right here is the second V that's closest to our hook, so I call it the second chain. We're going to single crochet into the second chain from hook. So we're just going to insert a hook into the second V from our hook. So we're going to insert it in the middle of the V, basically just poke it through. We're going to make a single crochet, so we basically yarn over. Grab the yarn like this, and after grabbing the yarn, we gotta pull it through the chain, which is the V. So we pull it through the V, and after that, we'll have two loops on our hook now. To finish off a single crochet, we just need to yarn over again. Just gotta pull it through two loops on our hook. Ta-da, that's your first single crochet. And then now we're gonna move on to our next chain, and then we're gonna place two half double crochet into that chain. We're gonna yarn over before inserting a hook. So we yarn over like this. Then we're gonna insert our hook into the next chain. So we just insert it like this. And then after that, we're gonna yarn over. So we yarn over and grab the yarn, and then we're gonna pull it through the chain which is the V, so we pull it through, and then now we have three loops on our hook. We just need to yarn over again, and then pull it through three loops on our hook. Basically pull through all three loops on our hook with the loop that we just pulled up, like so. And ta-da, that's our half double crochet. And this stitch is a little bit taller than a single crochet. As you can see, the hole right here is the chain that we just put our half double crochet into. And then we're going into the exact chain space and we're gonna place another half double crochet. We're gonna yarn over. And then we're gonna insert our hook into the same chain space right here. We're gonna yarn over and then pull it through the chain and then now we have three loops on our hook and then after that we're going to yarn over and then pull it through three loops on our hook and that's our second half double crochet in the same stitch so what we just did just now is called a half double crochet increase because we've placed two half double crochet into the exact same chain space and the next stitch is a double crochet increase so double crochet is also a little bit taller than the half double crochet so to start a half double crochet we need to yarn over before inserting our hook so we yarn over 
And then now we're gonna insert a hook into the next V, like this. And then after that, we're gonna yarn over, like this. And then we're gonna pull it through the chain. And then now we've got three loops on our hook, just like half double crochet. But the difference is that we're gonna yarn over, but we're only going to pull it through the first two loops on our hook, which is these two loops right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and just pull through the first two loops. This is the first one, and this one is the second one. And then now we're left with two loops on our hook, and then we're just going to yarn over, and then pull it through the rest of the two loops that are remaining on our hook, like this. And we just need to place another double crochet into the exact same chain space right here. So first, yarn over, and then we're going to insert our hook into this hole. And then we're going to yarn over, and then pull it through the chain. And now we've got three loops on our hook, and then for double crochet, we're just going to yarn over and then pull it through the first two loops on our hook, like this. And then we're left with two loops on our hook, and then we're just gonna go ahead and yarn over, and then pull it through the rest of the two. That's our double crochet increase. And then let's move on to triple crochet increase. Same thing, we're gonna place two triple crochet in the exact same chain space, and if we treble crochet, it's going to be taller. So for the next stitch, we're going to place three treble crochet in the next stitch right here. So it's no longer a increase, which is two stitches in a chain. It's going to be three this time. So to do a treble crochet, we're going to first yarn over. And then we're going to yarn over again. Before inserting our hook into the chain, we'll have already two loops on our hook like this. We're going to insert it into the next chain space, which is the next V, and we just insert it like this. We're gonna yarn over, and then grab the working yarn, and then we're gonna pull it through the chain. And as you can see, there's four loops on our hook right now, and then we're gonna yarn over, and then we're only gonna pull through the first two loops on our hook. So like this. Then now we're left with three loops on our hook like this, and it's same as double crochet. We yarn over, and then pull it through the first two loops on our hook. So to finish off the treble crochet, we basically yarn over, and then pull it through the last two loops on our hook. Ta-da! This is our treble crochet. So if you can't tell, it's actually ascending in height. Each stitch that we're doing is actually a little bit taller than the previous one because we want to create the moon shape like that shape, you know? We're going to place two more treble crochet into the exact same chain. So we'll have a total of three treble crochet in a chain. So to do the second treble crochet, it's basically the same thing. We just got to yarn over twice before inserting our hook into the chain. So we yarn over like this. And then the second time. And after that, we're going to insert our hook into the same chain space, which is this hole right here. I just insert it through. Then we're going to yarn over like this and then pull it through the chain. Then now we have four loops on our hook, so we just need to yarn over. And then we're going to pull it through the first two loops on our hook, which is these two. And then now we're left with three loops on our hook. Now we just need to yarn over and then pull it through the first two loops on our hook. And then now we're left with two loops. We yarn over, grab the yarn, and then pull it through the last two loops on our hook. And now we're gonna place another treble crochet into the chain. So again, we're gonna yarn over twice, and this the first time, and then the second time like this. And then we're going to insert it into the chain space right here, like this, and then yarn over, and then pull it through. And now we have four loops on our hook, and we're just going to pull it through the first two loops right here. So yarn over, and then pull it through the first two loops on our hook, like 
so. And now we're left with three and we just finish it off like a double crochet. We yarn over and then we pull it through the first two loops on our hook. Then we're left with two loops so we just yarn over and then pull through the rest of the two loops. And this creates a curve for our moon. And after that we're going to reverse everything that we just did to kind of give it a symmetric look. So to do a double crochet, we're basically just yarning over once only. So basically inserting our hook into the next V. We're gonna yarn over and then we're going to pull it through the chain and we'll have three loops on our hook. And now we just need to yarn over and then pull it through the first two loops on our hook like this. And we're left with two loops, so we just need to yarn over and then pull it through the rest of the two to finish out this double crochet. And since this is a double crochet increase, we're going to place another double crochet into the chain space. So yarn over and then insert it into the same chain space. And then we yarn over again and then pull up a loop like this. And then now we have three loops on our hook. And then we just need to yarn over and then pull it through the first two loops on our hook. And then we're left with two loops. So we just yarn over and then pull it through the two loops on our hook like this. Then we're gonna move on to our half double crochet increase for our next stitch. So for half double crochet, we also need to yarn over before inserting our hook. So we yarn over like this and then stick our hook into the next chain right here, like this. And then we yarn over and then pull up a loop. Now we'll have three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over and then pull it through all three loops on our hook. And that's our half double crochet. And then we're gonna do another half double crochet in the exact same chain space. So yarn over and then insert it into the same chain and then yarn over again and then pull up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook. We just need to yarn over and then pull it through all three loops on our hook. And then after that, this, this V right there is our last chain. It's a single crochet onto the last chain. So for a single crochet, we don't need to yarn over before inserting our hook. Just need to insert our hook this and then we yarn over and then pull up a loop and then you'll have two loops on our hook and we just need to yarn over and then pull it through two loops on our hook you kind of adjust it a little bit and kind of see the moon shape and then lastly we're going to do a slip stitch into the last chain right here is our last chain it's gonna stick our hook into that chain we're gonna do a slip stitch and to do a slip stitch we basically yarn over pull it through that chain and then with the loop that we just pulled through which is this one we're also going to pull it through the loop on our hook like this and since it's a slip stitch it's kind of like a little knot right here so we just need to pull it from both sides you can also pull the tail from the beginning as well and then after that we're gonna pull a really big loop using our hook just like that kind of pull like this length it doesn't need to be too short it doesn't need to be too long just like few finger length i guess and then we're going to cut it so here is our first moon and we're gonna make a total of two so basically repeat the steps that we did one more time we'll go ahead and sew these two pieces together and then we'll have a moon so right now i'm finishing off my second moon and then i'm just going to do a slip stitch on the last stitch like this and then pull it really tight we're going to leave a very long tail for this moon because we're going to use that tail to sew on our two pieces together. We use our hook and then we just make a really big loop. And to kind of measure how long to cut your tail, you can kind of wrap around your own moon for maybe like four times and that should be enough. Yeah, I think that's enough for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this. So now we have two moon pieces, one with short tail and one with long tail. We're gonna go ahead and sew these two pieces together. So grab the very long tail and we're gonna grab our darning needle and then we're gonna thread it through the darning needle. And then you're gonna grab your other moon and we're gonna place it behind the moon right here. And then as you can see, both the wrong sides are facing each other and the right sides are facing outside. And to distinguish which side is the wrong side, it's basically the bumpier side is the wrong side and the smoother looking side is the right side. So now we can actually start sewing. So first we've already aligned two of our moons together. So it's right opposite, so we just basically stick it through here. And you should be sticking through a V 
as you can see it's actually a V so which is a stitch and then we'll pull it through and then we're gonna stick it through the next stitch right here which is a V and then we're also gonna grab the hole from the side that's closest to us like that and we just basically pull it through so we're just basically going through like back and forth like this and then now it's this side and then we're gonna stick our needle through the loops of our two pieces and then we're gonna pull it through for the ends of our project like we don't really have to worry about this we can just continue sewing these on around the stitches and at the end we can just stick it inside of our knot then we're gonna stick our hook into the next loop and then also poke it through like this So we basically just repeat the whole thing all around the moon to sew all the sides together. So for the curved part, I'm going through a V instead of one single loop as well as the other V from the other side. And I'm just going to stick it through. I'm going to insert it into the V again and then the other V from the other piece. And I've already sewed till here. So for the ends like this, I'm just going to stick it the inside of the moon. And then as you can see, we've stuffed all the ends into the inside of the moon and that would also give the moon a little bit of a 3D shape now. And if you want your moon to be puffier, you can just cut your yarn like this and just stuff it into the moon until you get your desired puffiness. Actually, I'm pretty satisfied with how it looks right now so i'm just gonna keep going until i reach the end then i have reached my last stitch and i'm already done with my moon now to secure it i'm just going to insert my hook into any loop that's next to where the yarn is from so maybe just this loop and it doesn't really matter just any loop basically and then before pulling it through i'm just gonna grab the tail using my left hand because i want to tie a knot so i don't want the tail to be like completely pulled through so like that and then we're left with a loop on the left and we just need to stick our hook into that loop and then grab the needle and then pull it really tight and you'll see there's a tiny knot tied here so it will secure the end after that we're going to stick our hook into where the knot is so we basically stick it through this hole right here and then we're gonna stick our hook basically like to the opposite of our piece like this and then we're gonna pull it through we're going to cut the yarn so ta-da here is our little moon so let's move on to making the star So now let's move on to the star and for this star I'm using this pink color yarn. So to start this project, we're going to make a magic ring first. So to make a magic ring, we're going to grab the yarn using our right hand, two fingers up on our left hand. And now we're going to place the working yarn on top of our two fingers like this. And then we're going to go under the two fingers and then up again. So you'll have kind of like a parallel line on the top and then for the bottom, we're going to bring the end of the yarn to the palm of our hand like this and this would create an x at the bottom and then kind of a parallel line on the top now we're gonna grab our hook and then we're gonna go under the first loop and then we're going to grab the second loop that's closest to us and then we're gonna grab it and then we're going to pull it through the first loop and then after you pull through the first loop you're gonna twist it clockwise and then with our working yarn, which is this yarn that's attached to the yarn ball, we're going to yarn over and then pull it through the loop on our hook like this. And then we're just going to tighten it on both sides. And ta-da, that's our magic ring. So to adjust the size of the loop for our hook, we got to pull the working yarn. And we want it to be tighter, but not too tight. As long as your hook can move freely, that should be fine. And also, it shouldn't have that much gap in the loop. So to adjust the size of the magic ring, we're going to pull this yarn tail and then we just pull it. Just make the magic ring a little bit smaller, that should be fine. So the way I'm holding the yarn, I like to wrap my three fingers with the working yarn. So put it on top and then go behind and under and up like this. So basically wrap around our three fingers like this. Now we're gonna go 
behind our index finger like this. And then with our ring finger and pinky, I'm just going to hold it like this. And then to hold our piece, we're going to use our middle finger and thumb like this. And then with my index finger, it's always pointed up so the yarn can move smoothly. So after making the magic ring, we're going to be starting a round one. So basically in this round, it's just 10 double crochet in this round. So first we hold our piece with our middle finger and thumb like this. And then we're going to chain two to give the height for the double crochet. So to chain, we yarn over like this. And then go on top of the yarn. And that's called yarn over. After that, we're going to pull it through the loop on our hook. And that will create a V right here, and that is called one chain. And now we're going to chain another one. So yarn over, and then pull it through the loop on our hook. As you can see, we'll have two Vs right here, so that's our chain two. So we're going to be inserting 10 double crochet into this magic ring later. And be sure to have your stitch marker ready because we'll be using it to mark where the round starts. So first, we yarn over before inserting our hook into the magic ring. And then we're going to insert our hook into the ring. And then we're going to yarn over like this. As you can see, I've grabbed the yarn with my hook. And then we're gonna pull up a loop like this. So basically just pull it through the magic ring and then you'll bring up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook and then we're going to yarn over and then grab the yarn. And then we're only going to pull it through the first two loops on our hook, which is these two. And then we're just going to pull it through the first one and then the second one. And then now we're left with two loops on our hook. So we yarn over again, and then we pull it through the rest of the two loops. And ta-da, that's our first double crochet. So as you can see here, this is our double crochet. And then the V that's right on top of the double crochet, which is this one, is our stitch. The two Vs below our stitch is the chain two that we made in the beginning. And then we're gonna grab our stitch marker, and then we're gonna put our stitch marker onto the V that's right above the double crochet. We just basically poke it through the V. And then as you can see, the V is right above the double crochet. Close up the stitch marker. So this would mark where the round starts. So we won't forget which was the first stitch. So after putting this on, we're just gonna go ahead and keep crocheting. So again, nothing has changed. We're just gonna keep making nine more double crochet until we have 10 double crochets in total. So we yarn over first and then insert our hook into the magic ring like this. And then we yarn over again and then grab the yarn and then pull it through the magic ring and then bring up a loop like this. And then we'll have three loops on our hook. And then we're just going to pull it through the first two loops on our hook. So we yarn over and then pull it through the first two loops like this. And then we're left with two loops on our hook. So we yarn over and then we pull it through the first two loops. This is our second double crochet. So to continue, we yarn over and then we insert our hook into the ring and then we yarn over again and then pull up a loop like this. And then we'll have three loops on our hook. So we yarn over and then pull it through the first two loops on our hook and we're left with two loops on our hook. So we yarn over and then pull it through the last two loops. So for the fourth one, it's the same. We yarn over first and then insert our hook into the magic ring and then yarn over and then pull up a loop. Then now we have three loops on our hook and then we're gonna yarn over and grab the yarn and then we're only gonna pull through the first two loops. So the first one and the second loop and then now we're left with two loops on our hook, so we just yarn over and then pull it through the last two. So now we have four double crochet in this magic ring, and I'm gonna meet you guys when I'm done with the 10 in total. So now I have finished my 10 double crochet in this magic ring. So to close up the magic ring here, we're going to pull this tail like this, 
and then just pull it really tight until it's really closed up so as you can see there is no gap in the center so to finish off the round we're going to do a slip stitch into the first double crochet which is this stitch where we put our stitch marker in as you can see there's an opening so we need to join it to the first stitch to close up the circle so first remove the stitch marker and then we're going to insert our hook right into where we put our stitch marker in just now. As you can see, I'm going through a V and this is our first stitch of the round. And then now after inserting our hook, we're going to yarn over and grab the working yarn. And then we're gonna pull it through the first stitch and then bring up a loop. As you can see, this loop right here is the loop that we just pulled up. And then we're gonna use this loop to pull it through the loop on our hook like this. And then after that, we're going to Pull it really tight. As you can see, this tiny V right here is the slip stitch that we just did and we've already tightened it so you won't mistake it as a stitch later. And ta-da! This is our first round and then we're gonna go ahead and start round two. So to start round two, we're gonna chain three. So we yarn over and then we're gonna pull it through the loop on our hook like this. And then this V right here is our first chain, then the same for the second chain yarn over and then pull it through the loop and then after that our last one yarn over and then pull it through the loop on our hook like this so as you can see we'll have three V's right here which is our chain three and then we're going to do a half double crochet into our second chain and then a double crochet into our third chain so the V that's closest to our hook is the first chain and then the one next to it is our second chain and that is where we need to insert our hook into later to make a half double crochet so to make a half double crochet we yarn over before inserting our hook and insert our hook into the second chain from our hook it is a little bit tricky to insert our hook into the chain we can use our fingers to kind of grab the chain so it doesn't move around and then we insert it into the chain after that we yarn over and then pull up a loop And then now you have three loops on our hook, so we yarn over and then pull it through all three loops on our hook to make a half double crochet, like this. And then for the next V right here, which is the closest to our round one, we're going to do a double crochet in that chain. So we yarn over and then we're going to insert it into the V and then we yarn over again and then pull up the loop then now we have three loops on our hook and then we yarn over and only pulling through the first two loops and then yarn over and then pull it through the rest of the two and then we just need to attach this corner into the circle right here so this stitch right here which is right underneath the triangle that we just did right here is our next stitch and then this stitch is our second stitch from our first stitch what we're gonna do is that we're gonna skip the next stitch which is this stitch and then flip stitch into the next stitch so we're just going to insert our hook into the V so as you can see there's a V here and then we're gonna do a slip stitch to do a slip stitch we yarn over and then we pull it through the stitch and then with the loop that we just pulled up, we pull it through the loop on our hook like this. And then for a slip stitch, we need to tighten it or else this would be mistaken as a stitch. So we just need to tighten it like this. So after doing a slip stitch, we're gonna repeat what we just did. So we chain three. So chain one, chain two, and then chain three like this so as you can see we have three v's right here and then for the middle v is where we're gonna make our half double crochet so we grab the chain with our two fingers so it doesn't move and then we're gonna yarn over it and then insert our hook into the middle chain like this and then we're gonna yarn over and then pull up a loop and then we now have three loops on our hook and then we yarn over and then pull it through all three loops on our hook like this and then for the last chain right here we're gonna place a double crochet over and then insert it into the last chain and then yarn over again 
and then pull up a loop and now we have three loops on our hook and then we're going to yarn over and then pull it through the first two loops and then yarn over and pull it through the last two loops and then again this stitch that's attached to the triangle is our stitch and then this one is the next stitch and then we're going to skip the next stitch and then slip stitch into the next stitch which is right here so we're going to insert our hook into that stitch and then we're going to do a slip stitch which is yarn over and then pull it through the stitch and then with the loop that we just pulled up we're going to pull it through the loop on our hook and then tighten it and then we're just going to repeat this again so we chain three so yarn over and then pull it through the loop and then yarn over and pull it through the loop and then the third one and then we're going to make a half double crochet into the second chain from hook. So we yarn over, insert our hook into the second chain, and then we yarn over again. And then we pull up a loop, and now we have three loops on our hook, and then we're just going to yarn over, and then pull it through all three loops. Like this. And then for the last chain at the bottom, we're going to place a double crochet. So we just yarn over, insert our hook into the chain, yarn over again, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull it through the first two loops, and then we're left with two loops on our hook, so we yarn over, and then pull it through the last two loops. So this stitch right here is where the triangle is attached to. So this is our next stitch. This is the stitch where we're going to be slip stitching into. So we insert our hook into the second stitch and then yarn over and then pull up a loop like this and then also use the loop to pull it through the loop on our hook and then tighten it. So we basically need to repeat this until we reach the end. So I've finished my last triangle. So we're supposed to be slip stitching into this stitch right here, but this stitch is very tight, so it's kind of impossible for us to insert our hook into that. I'm just gonna slip stitch into the next stitch right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into that stitch and then do a normal slip stitch. After that, I'm gonna put it super tight. I'm going to cut the yarn. And then I will kind of like adjust the star a little bit. This is our first side of the star and we're going to repeat the steps and make the second star. And for this one, we're going to leave a very long tail for us to sew two pieces of star together. So we're just going to... And then we kind of measure it if you could wrap around the star for like four times. So one, two, three, four. Yay! Okay, so cut this yarn. Throw it at the end into the darning needle and then we're gonna grab two pieces of star place it back to back both of the wrong side are facing each other where the ends is sticking out from that's the wrong side so after aligning our two pieces together we can go ahead and insert our needle into the right opposite of where the yarn is attached to so the right opposite stitch would be this one you just hook it through and then basically we're just going into like this and then insert our needle like this and then this. So now we're going to insert a hook into the next stitch which is here. And as you can see I'm going through a V. We're going to insert our needle into the next piece of the same stitch as well. So as you can see they're right opposite of each other. And then we're just going to pull it through. And then now we're going to insert our hook into the next stitch and then just poke it through both pieces like this. And then we're going to pull it through, insert our needle into the next stitch, and then basically repeat this step until we reach the end of our work. And now I'm a bit more than halfway through, so I started from here and then now I'm here now. With all these tails, we can just stuff it the inside of the pouch and it could like act 
as a stuffing to make the star look a little bit puffier and then personally i kind of like my star a little bit more puffier so i'm just gonna cut my yarns this much you could use actual stuffing but i just don't like using more materials because this works just fine as well if you want your star to be a puffier then keep adding the yarns and then i'm just gonna continue with my work so I've already finished sewing these two pieces together and now I'm going to tie a knot to secure the end. So now I'm going to stick my hook into the loop that's closest to the yarn that's sticking out. You can choose any loop and I chose this one, it's just a random loop. And since we're going to tie a knot, so I'll be holding this on my left hand and then pulling it through. And I'm going to stick my hook into this loop on my left, this and then tighten it so it'll have a little knot right here and then after tying a knot we're gonna stick our hook in between the two pieces like this and then we're gonna go through it we kind of hide the tail in between the two pieces so to attach our two pieces together i'll be using this yellow curl yarn so first I'll grab one of our pieces, it doesn't matter which one we work with first and then we just hold our yarn with our left hand and then grab our hook and then stick it through the top of your work so for the star, the top of our work would be the tip of the triangle here remember to poke it through two pieces of your work if it's the moon, you could poke it through right here then we're gonna leave a bit of a tail right here and then we're gonna grab the working yarn, hold your yarn and then just pull it through it's a bit hard to pull through and i find twisting your hook really helps we leave the tail dangling here and then we'll grab our yarn like normal and then now we're just gonna start chaining yarn over like this and then just pull it through the loop on our hook and then again yarn over and then pull it through the loop on our hook so the length of your strap depends on what you want to use this for so for example, if you want to use this as a bookmark, so your strap should be at least the height of your book. So just chain accordingly. And for headphone accessory, we'll also have to measure if it could go across the headphone band. So for example, I've already chained a bit and I'm gonna go ahead and measure the height of my book. And in this case, it's enough. So if I were to do a bookmark, I'll just stop here. So personally, I would like to make it a headphone accessory. So to measure the headphone accessory, we gotta fold our strap in half and then we're gonna place it on the one side of the headphone band and then wrap it across so I'm just gonna chain more and I've chained a bit longer so now I'm just gonna measure it again we fold it in half wrap it across the headphone band like this so I think that's a good length for me so I'll just attach this to the moon now so here is the top part of the moon so we're gonna insert a hook into that and then grab our working yarn and then we're gonna yarn over the working yarn and then pull it through the moon and again you could just twist your hook to make it easier and then with the loop that we just pulled up we're gonna pull it through the loop on our hook so basically doing a slip stitch like that and then pull it really tight for that we're gonna leave a big loop then with the tail i'm gonna thread it through my darning needle i want to secure the end so i'm just gonna go through a random loop on our piece and then i'll grab the yarn with my left hand and then pull it through and then insert my needle into the loop on my left hand and then pull it through to tie a knot like this and now I'm gonna insert my needle into the moon and then pull it through and for the tail from the start just stick the needle into where the yarn is coming from stick it in and ta-da! here is our little moon and star accessory and to put it on the headphone and then we just need to fold our strap in half like this and then wrap it around the headphone band like this and then we're gonna grab the two of our accessory into the loop from the start and then i like to make the moon a little bit higher than the star 
And then you kind of do the same thing for the back charm as well and for the bookmark you just place it onto the book and you could use it as a bookmark. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and want more of these, be sure to subscribe, like, and turn on the notification bell so you get a notification whenever I post a new video. Comment down below which tutorial you would want next, the tulip cart holder or the kissing whale. That's it for today's video. See you guys on my next one. Bye!